Hey guys, it's Jessica from Pizza Books, and today we're here with the top five books that I read this winter. I realized I didn't do this when Reagan posted hers on Peru's project, and I was like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot I was doing this. Every three months, I talk about my favorite five books of that, what, what is the word of that season? Thank you, words. And so winter is almost over this month, hopefully, and so I have December, January, and February to talk about. I have five books to talk about with you, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to them. Okay, so I'm cheating for number one because I read, I think, three Black Dagger Brotherhood books, rated them all five stars, I'm obsessed, so I'm just gonna have my number five slot. These are not in any particular order, but one of the five books are all the Black Dagger Brotherhood books I read because I'm obsessed, if you didn't know, hello, I'm, my name is Jessica and I'm obsessed with J.R. Ward's Black Dagger Brotherhood. But I read three, I believe, in the last three months and love them all and I'm obsessed, like I said, so. I'm, they're vampire paranormal romances, and they're amazing. So that's one choice bundled up with uh, three books in one, because, you know, I can't choose. The next book that was my favorite, I actually have book two, because I don't own book one in paperback yet, but I am too lazy to run downstairs and grab my iPad, so I have, this is The Reigning and the Rule, but it is actually The Surviving Trace by Callie Reed, that is one of my favorites ever. It is, I mean, not like of all time, but it's like pretty high up there. It's a time-traveling romance about a woman who finds this picture, and she is uh, freaked out because she dreamed about the guy in the picture the day before. So she had never seen him before, dreamed about him, and being in love, and like something happening. And found his picture later. So she's obsessed with it and then she gets thrown back into his time about like the 1920s I want to say and she isn't like, it's not like Outlander where like she physically goes back in time as herself. She goes back in time and is in someone else's life that looks exactly like her and she takes over her life and the guy from the picture in her dream is that woman's husband and hates her guts. So it's a hate to love romance. It is so good. The cliffhanger is crazy, so I cannot wait to read book two, but if you like a time-traveling romance and something that you haven't heard of, because I never heard of this series until Sarah from Words of Sarah, my best friend, told me about it, and I was like, well, okay, I love Outlander, I love time traveling, and I was obsessed. So I can't wait to read book two, because it does end on a cliffhanger, and it's crazy, and she is engaged in the present, adding a little bit more of a drama, but it's really good, and I loved it. Next is another hate to love, and it was a runner-up in my top 10, I want to say, of 2018. That was 2018. And that is Right Where I Want You by Jessica Hawkins. This is a hate to love office romance with dogs. Oh my gosh. I loved everything about this book. I read an e-arc. I found this copy at Half Price Books and freaked out because I loved it so much. This girl, Georgina, is hired by this men's magazine to help revamp their brand because they're seen as very um, misogynistic and players, basically, and that's not catering to society today, and so she has to go in and try to fix their image. Sebastian is the, like, head creative director of the magazine, and they instantly butt heads, and he's like, we don't need you to help us and she sticks it to him. She has a dog that's freaking adorable and their romance is adorable and I loved everything about it. If you want an office romance, hate to love, and a dog novel that does dogs justice, like I, a pet peeve of mine is like authors not having realistic dog owners. She really was a realistic dog owner. So I loved it. Five out of five. One of my favorites in the past three months. The next one I talk about way too much, and I read it, I want to say last month? I don't think I read it in January. I think I read it last month, and that is Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa. I still feel like I'm saying that title wrong, but whatever. This is a fantasy romance, and he is a... What are they in The Cruel Prince? Fairy. He is part of the Fae. Wow. And so I remember this as I read this right after The Cruel Prince, and this is like what I wanted from The Cruel Prince. He is Fae, and he is the bargainer, and so our main character is a siren, which I thought was sweet. She lives in today's time, and she um, is flashes back between the past when she's at boarding school and calls on him for a bargain and keeps on calling on him and keeps on calling him until she's racked up like hundreds of bargains that she owes him. And he is back now, I think it's like five years later, um, to cash in her debt and there was like a lot of uh, sexual tension and heat between them in the past but he always thought she was too young for it and didn't understand him and now he's like I'm calling on your debt and now they can kind of act on their feelings even though she kind of hates him they left things in a weird place it, so it flashes back through the past and the present all throughout the book 
really good fantasy. I think it's fantasy because it's fae and sirens and yeah, different creatures. And it was really good and I really want the next book because there's this mystery going on where he's from and there's a secret to his character and he like puts off the impression he's all bad but there's more to him than what it seems and so if you want a really good fantasy romance and it is romance for adults, you will love this. The last one I haven't even hauled yet because I recently bought this. I'm going to a Polycon and this author's going to be there and I'll see if I see her. And that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. This one I read in December, I think, and whoa, did it like blow me away. I finished reading this and I could not put into words like anything. I was freaked out by that ending. Like I had heard going into this that like the ending's gonna blow your mind. And it was like a decent thriller as I was reading it. Like I was definitely terrified at some points and I like did not want to read this in bed alone at night because I was like kind of weirded out and like scared. I'm a huge scaredy cat. I can't do scary movies whatsoever. And so the fact that Colin Hoover could scare me with her writing shows you she's good. The ending blew up, like, I was, like, mind blown. Freaked out. So, this is about a woman who is hired to be a ghostwriter for this other woman because she can't write anymore. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, and there is a lot of romantic scenes in here, so be ready for that. And it was crazy. That's all I can say. It was so good. I still think about it. But it was really good, and I really want to reread it soon, and I'm glad I have the beautiful paper bag because it's so pretty. And if you like a thriller, you have to read this. And those are the top five books that I read this winter. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were or what your favorite book in the past three months has been. I would love to know. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.